for Joel, who has flown and seen his dad. His dad's no better, but he was able to go. So his sister has left today, or will leave today, to go take turns. We are still praying for them. There's many that need prayer. My sister went in the hospital this week. Pray for her. She has what they call Stephen Johnson Syndrome. It means, and I want all of you to pay attention, I don't tell business unless I need to. But ain't nothing private because ain't nothing new under the sun. But I do need to let you know, I want you to write it down. It's called the Stephen Johnson Syndrome. It means that you are allergic to a medicine that will take your body all over the place. Now that's not what it means, but I'm paraphrasing. What happened was she took some medicine that she was trying to combat shingles, is what I told you. And the medicine she took, she was allergic to. That medicine broke her out terribly, which made her have a terrible reaction to what they were trying to fix. So they put her in the hospital and said they would watch her. I said, well, Sister Sheila, I said, well, how will you know when you get another reaction if they give you something? She said, well, we'll just have to see. I got a call before I came to Sunday school this morning. She said, I just want to tell you, I had another reaction. They gave me the medicine at 9 o'clock, and she said, I start swollen up in my throat, and I start not, sister, sister, you know what I'm talking about. And she said, I told them, get in here. My heart start going all over the place. She said, get in here. Whatever you're giving me, it's wrong. Take it out. Flush it out, whatever. Pay attention to your body, saints. Because if you don't pray and ask people to pray for you, I know you like to be private, and I ain't, I ain't mad at you because you're private. But you better not be that private that you don't ask for prayer. And God don't some because some of you, sometimes you're too sick to pray. And somebody else need to pray for you. So all of you that are on medicine, you know I get on everybody. Go to the pharmacist and find out. Take all those bottles that you got, sit them on the counter, and say, excuse me, tell me whether these are having a reaction to each other. Am I telling the truth, baby? Because doctors mean well, but they don't all, and I'm a, I know she's a living witness, because if she had to come off of some of the medicine she came off, we wouldn't be here looking at her. You just trust those doctors. Sometimes you trust them more than you trust the God you serve. I'm sorry, I'm just walking down here. See, I might as well preach like this is my last Sunday. Check out your medicine. Because if it's messing you up, can I tell on a personal thing and I don't take medicine? Elder Pappen had to take some medicine. And they issued some more medicine to him. But I now believe that the medicine they didn't, they didn't realize. The doctor said it was okay. Doctor said it was okay. The doctor said it was okay. Because they practicing on me. That ain't my medicine to just hold on. Just be with me. Bear with me. So I happened to look on the... And we took his blood pressure and it was just, I mean, we weren't taking it by, we were taking it by the right machine. And it just looked like it was off the so Jesus. <laughs> this is crazy. So of course the doctor issued some more medicine. Come to find out, anybody taking ibuprofen? If you got high blood pressure, don't take it no more. Because ibuprofen is counteracting the high blood pressure medicine. Is this medical, medical day? Yes, it is. Because I'm trying to save your body as well as your soul. It don't work, does it, Karen? So I read the inscription. I said, oh, no, baby, you can't take ibuprofen. Because if you take ibuprofen, now guess what, though? He been taking ibuprofen. Because he took it with the other medicine. That means his blood pressure was not on the right range. What would have happened if we hadn't have been praying? Amen. 
So now he's on top of me. I just tell you all that just because I, I, it's not because I'm trying to let you know how much I know, because I don't know that much. But I do know that God sends his word to heal us. And sometimes you're looking at it in a different form than what God is going to heal. I want you to give God a hand praise for who he is. Oh, that's not, I didn't say for me. You need to give God a hand praise for who he is. I appreciate every one of you that attend the building. And I thank God for all that you are here. And I know pastor is preaching next week. Give God a hand praise. That he's preaching. Come on now, you can be better than that. Act like he wanted to preach. All is well. We are yet prepared for the surgery on October the seventh. God has blessed him to pass and do all the tests that he has to do. So the Lord says the same on October the seventh, around seven twenty, he will go down and have that other surgery done. Good news. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to tell you this and be honest, and you don't have to like it or not, but that's not. There's a lot of pastors that don't tell their business. And you talking on the phone, we don't know nothing. They don't tell us nothing. But the devil is a liar. I'm going to tell you. And all that other stuff that you get that's hearsay, nothing, you just get in hearsay because it didn't come from me. Pastor's having a hip surgery. He gonna go in to have the right hip. Well, I thought he had that done before. He did. And he gonna have it done again. And we just have admonished him that when he gets finished out of all that anesthesia and come to himself, that he don't look at the doctor like he did last time and say, doctor, if I had a third hip, I would get surgery on the third hip. I said, Sister Peggy, he told your pastor, don't say nothing about another surgery. That is not why he has the surgery, but anyway, it's a good it's a good conversation between me and him that I can tell him don't have the third, the fourth hip done, but God is blessing him. The doctors please, even with the MRI, that the tissue has not deteriorated and that means he's gonna be blessed. I just need you and he needs you to continue to pray. And even though they're trying to not keep him as mobile, they want him to be kind of not mobile, that God will do something and correct whatever needs to be correct, and that he'll be up a little bit better than the he, they think he's going to be up. They, they, they're being very honest with us. And we prayed on the doctors. We prayed before we got to the doctor. Give us the right doctor. And he is compatible to us. God is a blessing. So we're just thanking God that we have a great man of God. We have a great man of God. We have a great man of God. I know you think, when we laugh and talk about him, I laugh and talk about him. I'm in love with that man. And I'm grateful that God has given him to me. And I'm grateful that he's our leader. I'm grateful that he's head of this place. I'm grateful. And if he wasn't a man, I don't know what's up with that, but I have heard. I have heard. Mother, they just don't go to church with their husband. And it's not because they're not churchy. Don't get it mixed up. It just means they ain't there. Well, I'm here to tell you that I came all the way from Collin, from Washington, Pennsylvania and follow him because he's a man of God. So all of you that have come to the right place, he's given you a pastor after your own heart. Now he didn't ask for all of that and I didn't give him no kidney, so that don't mean I can go get no, no diamonds. But anyway, I give him all my, yes I can. I can get a car maybe. But I'm just grateful. I want you to let you know that we are in order. And when he is in surgery, we will still have order in the house. We are not making no major changes while he's gone. 
We're not adjusting to nothing. We're not hanging nothing else up. We'll wait till he gets out of the hospital and tell us what to do because he is our senior pastor. And we're grateful for him. Thank you, honey, for letting me be me. Now for all of that, we are grateful to God. For the last past couple weeks, we have been talking about prayer. And I'm going straight back down that lane today. When God has given us something to study and learn about, we should not take it lightly. I know you think that it was just for you, but it's been just for me. I want my prayer life to be better. We all slip sometimes. We all don't get up at the same time. I have enjoyed being home as far as retired, but my prayer life changed. It changed, can I be honest with you? It changed because I didn't rise up as early. So when I didn't rise up as early, I changed my time. Sometimes then it gets later and later, but I'm sure that the prayer that he's been asking us, even when we talk on love, God wanted us to know about love. He's not done, he just gave me a break. He, he, he's not, he's gonna come back and whip us again about love. But he said, okay, give him a break. Let him, let him take it all in. But work on some other things and we need to work on our prayer life if we want anything done. And I know that God is not only telling me about prayer, he's looked like as I listen to the ministers and the preacher. I went to church last night, I mean, I'm sorry, last week in San Diego and um, sorry that I didn't reassure Sister Peacock, but um, Bishop Clossie Pierce was in town and he was talking about the same thing, about prayer. And he has been at death door, has ordered his casket, had done all that, and the God he served spoke to him and said, I didn't tell you that, I didn't tell you. Now does he still have cancer? Yes he does. Is it incurable? Yes it is. But he said, God didn't say I was gonna die yet. See, some of you have given you a death sentence and you've signed all the paper and you just gonna sit back and die. 